So welcome back. Final day of this series. I don't want to say we, we kept best for last, um, but we kept something um, that can be interesting or might not work at all for you. Um, I'm talking about machine learning, which is kind of the thing that everybody's trying to do because everybody wants to have like a smart machine um, to solve your operational issues for you. So I'll give you a quick rundown of how that could look like for you. There is, you can set a lot of this up manually, um, but the observability solutions in the Elastic Stack have a lot of um, this already built in. So I will click together a couple of jobs. So if you are in the observability overview here and you already see anomalies, this is kind of what we are trying to do here in terms of machine learning. We want to have this anomaly detection. So we want to learn what is normal and then get alerted when something is not normal. So for example, the log rate is one of these things that is built in here to see you don't get any logs, maybe you should get alerted for that. Or you get 10 times logs of that you normally get, you should also probably get alerted about that or you should get at least like some anomaly. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the data since the start of when we started collecting this, I will keep monitoring this. Um, I'm taking all the logs and file beat data sets um, into consideration here. And then I am creating that ML job. And that will create this job in the background on a so-called machine learning node. So if you are using Elastic Cloud, for example, you need to add a machine learning node to your cluster. Otherwise, you will have a warning here and you cannot enable this. Um, it will take a moment or two until this job is created and like it creates a machine learning model of what to expect and what is an outlier, outlier out of this data. And before we jump into viewing these results, um, I'll put together two more jobs. They will be created in the background and we'll look at the results shortly after that. So next up, in inventory, for example, it's one of the places where we have uh, anomaly detection here in the menu as well. The same on APM, but I'll to keep it simple, I'll just stick to the metrics. So here, when I say anomaly detection, it gives you the option, do you want to monitor the hosts? Or if you're using Kubernetes, do you want to monitor the specific posts? Since I'm not using Kubernetes here, I will just run for hosts. Um, I want to monitor all the data. And I could break this up, for example, on the cloud instance ID, I want to break this up basically per host. So you could say like, how do you want to partition the data? I only have a single node here, so this won't make a big difference. But if you have many servers, you probably don't want to have these data like, like an anomaly of all the metrics across all the hosts, but per node. And you could use the node name or DNS name or whatever. I'm using the cloud instance ID to see um, what this is doing here. So this will take a moment to create the job. Um, if everything works as expected, this will refresh in a moment. Um, it has created my job here. Um, where do you find all of these um, jobs then? Um, if you head over to the, the menu and in machine learning, you have this overview. Now you can see we have these so-called groups, hosts, logs, UI, and metrics. I'm adding one more um, job here before we dive into those. So I will create a new job. This is now slightly more manual. Um, I'll say I'm just interested in the Nginx logs, for example. Out of all these logs, it will suggest a couple of things that it already has set up, so I don't have to click everything together, but you can create this from any data you have. Um, this has just some jobs predefined. So for example, how many visitors are on your site? Um, what's, what are the status codes that are being returned by your server? How many unique IP addresses are connected to your server, um, etc. So you have a rough idea of like what is going on in Nginx and we have created these predefined jobs. You could customize any of those um, to um, see what is normal and what is an outlier. And this will create um, five more jobs for me and then I'll let this create, it will take another moment. And then we'll start looking at the, the details of these jobs. So while this refreshes, um, my jobs were successfully created. I am heading to anomaly detection. 
it has all the jobs here. It shows you how many records have you processed um, to look at the existing data and try to generate that model of what is normal and what is not normal. And you can see that these jobs are up and running. Um, so we can start looking at some of those. So for example, at the, the logs UI, the, the log rate that we are ingesting, um, you can either see that as a, a metric view or like a, like a curve or graph. Um, so I'm just looking into the count of engine X, access logs, for example. And it will then show me, um, this is the rate of events that it has been collecting from the Nginx access log. Um, you can see the more red it is, the, the more of an anomaly it is. Why did that happen? So what, what did we have here? So this is like the base load. This was when we had heartbeat running to generate a more or less even load. And you can see this blue band in the background. That's kind of like the expected range of uh, events that we had. And then we yesterday ran, um, my colleague David ran a script to actually um, have more requests on the system. So this is when we had these anomalies because suddenly we had more requests than before. And you see here it changed the, the, the rate. And then you can also see that the kind of like this blue band shifted up. So it's learning with it. Um, then we stopped everything. I stopped heartbeat. David stopped his script. We didn't get any events. Now it's alerting me that, oh, there are too few events. Um, and then we started another script to generate even more load. Again, any of these dots is like an anomaly with a specific score. And then we let it return to normal now. It is still a bit confused because, well, it was different before, but you can see that band is going down again and is learning what is normal now. At the bottom here, you can also see um, the kind of like anomalies sorted by score. So for example, here, this was the most severe outlier. Um, when it said, normally, I have this many events here, and now I have zero. So something broke or is wrong. And you should, probably should get alerted from that. So you could then have a job that actually sends you an email or a Slack or whatever. David has shown you the alerting rules. So this would tie in here. And you could say the threshold is like anything over 75 in terms of an anomaly score. I want to be alerted about that. And you can see um, here, are, these are the details about this specific job. Um, you can also look at, for example, the, the host metrics, or let me give, go start from here, because this maybe might make more sense that you see the overview of all the metrics here. Um, and here you can see these are the metrics, or these are the three things that we are looking at, network in, um, network out, and memory usage on the host. And this is broken down on for my one host already. And you could see that we have an anomaly here. And it was um, bytes out. This was when we started the script to just generate more load. You can see here, suddenly, our node was serving three times the amount of traffic that you had normally. Will all of this work for you or show you what is relevant? Um, maybe. It really depends on how regular of a pattern you have. So what this is very good at to figure out like, oh, during the day you have a spike in load and then in the afternoon or evening it goes down and at night it's less and then in the next day it, it increases again. So you don't have like a static threshold, but you have some kind of curve that is more or less even and it might be even for the weekdays and then like different for the weekend. So any kind of these patterns, it learns very well. But overall, how well machine learning and anomaly detection will work for your system strongly depends on how good of a pattern you have. So if it's very erratic and changes more or less randomly, like with our demo, um, you might get alerts when it's just like something random changed or we redeployed the app and they changed it. Um, so sometimes you get very good results out of this and sometimes um, it's a bit um, more complicated to figure out if this makes sense or not. Um, or we could look at Nginx very shortly because we are coming up on time. So you, we can see here um, in this time frame um, since yesterday, but we could, for example, also say like, just give me the last 24 hours. Um, and you can see here, um, I want to have, for example, the, the status codes or whatever. And then you can see the rate of IP addresses connecting to my system. And um, at the bottom here, again, you see um, some anomalies that we have detected here. So for example, um, for some reason here, we had 70 times more source IPs connecting to our system than before. 
Um, so this is the general idea of machine learning that it learns over time what is normal for your system and then lets you know that, oh, this is not normal. And it's normally more complicated than a static threshold. I mean, something like zero logs, you can write the rule for that and get alerts for that. Um, but what is the maximum of the log events that you normally collect in your system? That can just change over time. As your site becomes more successful, that will increase. And you don't want to always manually change that threshold. And that's exactly where this machine learning feature tries to come in to kind of like learn over time what is normal and what is not normal. Um, final caveat for all of this, that's also part of why we kept it for last. Anomaly detection in the machine learning features is one of the paid features of the Elastic Stack if you run it on premise. On the cloud service, you just need to include that machine learning node, and then it is included um, in the Elastic Cloud service. If you have Elastic Cloud running, just try it out and see if your system has like some good pattern that it can detect and then alert you if something non-normal is happening. And with that, I think we're pretty much at the end of this series. I hope everybody learned something. And we will be thinking about what we want to run next in this series. Um, if you have any ideas or wishes, let us know. Otherwise, we'll come up with our own idea. Thanks for joining. Um, also, thanks from Aravind, Alex, and David, um, who are staying in the background today. Um, and hope to see you next time. Bye.